Do you guys want to see my new pets? Don't worry, they're a rescue. These are vinegar eels, Turbotrix acidi, and they're living quite happily in a 50-50 mix of water and apple cider vinegar. These millimeter long animals can tolerate a wider range of acidity and alkalinity than any other animal, from a pH of 11, the pH of ammonia, down to 1.6, the same pH as stomach acid. They feed on bacteria responsible for fermentation, which is why they're sometimes found living in fermenting liquids like vinegar and kombucha. Don't worry though, vinegar eels get filtered out of vinegar and kombucha before it's bottled and sold. Mm wiggles in the back of your throat on the way down. Also, these aren't actually eels. Eels are a type of fish, and a fish would not do well in this particular living situation. Turbotrix acidi is a species of roundworm, members of the phylum Nematoda, one of the most widespread and extremophilic animals to ever exist. And today, we're taking a tour through some of the bizarre places that nematodes call home. But what is a nematode? Are they friend or foe? And how much do we actually know about them? We'll find the answer to all these questions and more as we continue exploring the Tree of Life. Nematodes all share a very simple body plan. A thin, unsegmented tube with a mouth on the front and an anus at the rear. Their bodies are covered in a thin cuticle that molts as they mature, a feature that they share with arthropods. Nematodes, although quite wormy, are more closely related to crabs and butterflies than they are to earthworms or flatworms. Most species are transparent and only a few millimeters long, but they range in size from microscopic all the way up to 28 feet. That record belongs to the species Placenta nema gigantissima a parasitic roundworm that lives in the placenta of sperm whales. And it's with that, we begin exploring the many, many, many places that nematodes call home. Strap in. Let's start simple. If you were to go out into the woods and scoop up a random handful of soil, you would almost certainly be holding thousands of nematodes. They're the most common animals found in healthy soil where they maintain a balanced ecosystem by eating bacteria, preying on or parasitizing smaller invertebrates, and being prey for larger invertebrates. Some species can consume up to 5,000 bacteria per minute, while others are the only food source for a group of carnivorous fungi. They play similar roles on the ocean floor, where they make up 90% of all animal life. In fact, you can visit virtually any habitat on Earth and nematodes will be there. Swimming in hot springs, crawling through deserts, and making tiny snow angels in the Arctic tundra. They've even been found in gold mines 12,000 feet below the Earth's surface, where low oxygen levels, high temperatures, and a lack of sunlight prevent anything other than bacteria from surviving. Estimates vary on how many nematode species exist, but the current consensus is roughly a million, even though only about 20,000 have been formally described. Most live in the topsoil, but some prefer to live inside the bodies of other animals. I'm talking, of course, about parasitic roundworms. I recommend not eating spaghetti for the next few minutes. It's estimated that every species of vertebrate animal, as well as the majority of invertebrates and even plants, serve as a host for at least one species of parasitic nematode. Many parasitic nematodes are highly host-specific, exclusively infecting a single species. Others are a bit less picky. Humans, for example, play host to around 35 different species, a few of which can cause serious illness like trichinosis or elephantitis. Sometimes, parasitic nematodes end up inside the human body unintentionally, but still end up living very happily where they're not supposed to. This past summer, a three-inch long nematode was surgically removed from a 64-year-old woman's brain in Australia. The worm, Ophidoscarus robertsi, is normally found inside the digestive system of carpet pythons. So how one ended up inside this poor woman's frontal lobe is anyone's guess. I'll leave a link to the full story in the comments. Okay, 
I'm going to wrap this up by introducing you to one of the most important species in the history of biology, Canor habditis elegans. C. elegans is something called a model organism, a species that has been widely studied in a laboratory environment to help increase our understanding of biological processes. They've been instrumental in researching cell division, aging, sleep, and neural development. They were the first multicellular organism to have their entire genome sequenced, the first to have all their neural connections mapped, and the first to have the developmental fate of every cell in its body determined. An argument can be made that we know more about the biology of C. elegans than we know about human biology. Being a model organism means that you take part in a lot of experiments, and one particular experiment caught the world's attention when it went tragically wrong. In 2003, the Space Shuttle Columbia broke apart re-entering Earth's atmosphere, resulting in the deaths of all seven crew members. Also on board the shuttle was a group of C. elegans, which were part of an experiment researching their growth on a synthetic diet. Almost three months after the disaster took place, the nematodes, encased in aluminum canisters, were found alive among the debris. This makes C. elegans the only known organism to survive unprotected re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. Who is the most powerful animal on Earth? Is it the most numerous animal? The most intelligent? Or is it the animal that has adapted and thrived in every known ecosystem? An animal that's retained an incredibly simple body plan, but still exists everywhere on Earth that life can be found. The animals that have silently and unobtrusively conquered every corner of the map, surviving mass extinctions and space shuttle crashes while sustaining themselves on every food source imaginable. Members of the phylum Nematoda live amongst us, and sometimes inside of us, in much the same way bacteria do. Some can be harmful, some can be helpful, but the vast majority exist on planet Earth without directly affecting us in any way, while still having an enormous impact on the tree of life. Next week, we meet the nematode's closest cousins, animals that look incredibly similar to nematodes, except they're a little bit larger, and they have a lifestyle that's far more restrictive, and may or may not involve insect mind control. One of the most unsettling and fascinating creatures you'll ever meet, the horsehair worm, Phylum nematomorpha. Until then, stay curious, stay connected, and never stop evolving.